Okay, uh, welcome back. This part, as uh, indicated on the table of contents in part one, is on phonological processes. We consider here two major types, assimilation processes and syllable structure processes. Now we look at assimilation processes. Sounds in assimilation processes display a behavior that's similar to the chameleon, a reptile that adopts, or let's say assimilates, the colors of surrounding branches. In a manner similar to the chameleon, sounds also change features to look like, or let's say sound like, other neighboring sounds. First, we consider processes that involve a consonant assimilating vowel features. Then we move on to the cases where a vowel can assimilate features from a neighboring consonant. And after that, we will be able to see how consonants assimilate other consonant features. And finally, we have a look at how vowels can assimilate features from other vowels. Okay, so now we look at how a consonant assimilates vowel features. The high front vowel E and the glide Y can be considered as palatal sounds. In other words, they're articulated with the tongue touching the hard palate in exactly the same position as in palatal consonants. And that's why we sometimes find sounds that become palatal because they come before the high front vowel E or the high front glide Y. Now look at these examples from American English. In American English, it is common for alveolar consonants like t, d, s, and z to be shifted back to the palatal alveolar point of articulation because they come before the palatal glide y. Look at these examples. Now look at how the alveolar t becomes the palatal alveolar affricate ch in the example, the first example, I let you go, let you. And look at how the voiced alveolar stop d becomes the voiced palatal alveolar affricate j in the example, did you, did you go? And so in the same manner for s and z, how they become respectively the palatal alveolar fricative sh and z in the examples I miss you and is your brother. So now we look at labialization in touch and hate. Remember, this is a Labialization is a, a secondary articulation where consonants, well, usually stops, are pronounced at their point of articulation, but they're released at the same time with rounded lips. In Tejan Heit, the velar stop G is articulated with rounded lips in a word because of the presence of a rounded vowel in another morphologically related form of the same word. In other words, as we move from noun to verb, or from verb to noun, or from singular to plural, or vice versa. The labialization of g, for example, in the verb gun, sleep, in Tejlehit, is a result of the presence of a rounded vowel after the velar stop g in the nominal form, taguni, the consonant 
assimilates the rounding of the vowel in the manner that you can see. So g, u, pronounced as g. Look at more examples. Now here we have the viewer's voice stop g followed by a rounded vowel in the words taguni, tagudri, ugu, and aguru. Now notice what happens in morphologically related forms where the g assimilates the rounding of the vowel and becomes a labialized consonant. Gun. Agodri. G. Igura. Now we turn to how a vowel assimilates consonant features. It is common for vowels to become nasalized when followed by a nasal consonant. What we mean by nasalized is they're pronounced through the nasal cavity. In French, low vowels become nasalized when A, followed by a nasal consonant in word final position, as in the words bon, bon, fin, bon, or in a position where the nasal consonant is in turn followed by another consonant, as in the following words, bonk, mont, sank. Look at the data below. The first here, we can see how the vowel is nasalized because it is in word final position, in other words, followed by nasal. You can see the nasal in the French um, spelling. So this is pronounced pont for bridge and bon for bench and fa for end. The When the nasalized vowel is followed by another consonant in words like Longueur, quantité, a mass. Notice that the nasal is not articulated. It is absorbed by the vowel, which becomes nasalized. This process also uh, happens in English in words like can't, seem, man, hen, and camera. Notice camera. If I pronounce the word without nasalization, it would be camera, camera. With nasalization, camera. You can see the difference, I guess. Another example of how consonants can influence vowels or how Vowels assimilate consonant features. It can be seen in Arabic in emphasis. A front vowel becomes back if it follows an emphatic consonant. Emphatic consonants like to, so, do, and vo, which in Arabic script are written as follows. Now look at the examples. Decca, flatten. Dorva, to harm. Veheb, veheb, sorry. Gold, vahar, appear. Teen, fig. Tweeb, scent. Sed. Or them and soft Q. We carry on with the assimilation processes. 
And we move on to the third kind of assimilation processes here, and namely how consonants assimilate other consonant features. We pick up the process of nasal assimilation as one of the common processes. This process is, involves a nasal prefix that usually assimilates the point of articulation of stem initial stops. That is, the first stop of the stem influences the, na the nasal prefix, which takes the point of articulation of that consonant. Look at the examples. N following B, that's an alveolar following a, a bilabial, and the nasal becomes bilabial. Imbalance, imbalance. Look at how the alveolar nasal becomes velar when followed by the velar consonant, k. Incorrect. Most people would pronounce this as incorrect. We might hear the other possible pronunciation. This is also possible. Now, look at the English prefix in, meaning not, which can take several forms depending on the point of articulation of the first consonant in the word. Look at these words. Active, inactive, decent, indecent, tolerable, intolerable. Now, look at this. The nasal is alveolar before alveolar consonants, bilabial before bilabial consonants, like in the words possible and mature, and velar before velar consonants, as in the words incoherent and incomplete. We consider in the next slide uh, another process where consonant assimilates another consonant feature. The English plural suffix s assimilates the voicing of the final stem consonant, as in the following examples. Look at how the plural s is pronounced z after voiced stops and s after voiced stops. In other words, it assimilates the voicing of the final consonant in the word. The next example comes from Yoruba, a language spoken in Nigeria. In Yoruba, there's a prefix that assimilates the same position of the first consonant in the stem. This, the nasal prefix marks the present continuous. Look at these examples. The first word, we have ba, which is bilabial, fo, we have f, labiodental, and te, alveolar, sun, alveolar, lo, alveolar, and the last two are velar. Now, of course, we expect the nasal prefix to pick up the same point of articulation as the first consonant in each verb, and that's exactly what happens. Now look, the first one, we have a bilabial, and the nasal prefix becomes bilabial. And the next one, the first consonant of the verb is labiodental. In fact, it's labial. In other words, the, the two consonants in ba and fo are labial. And so that's why the nasal prefix is bilabial. In the last, in the next three examples, we have the consonants are alveolar, and that explains why the prefix is alveolar. And in the last two examples, the first consonant of the stem is velar, and the nasal picks up that velar point of articulation. In Turkish, um, the stem vowel 
the suffix vowel takes on the same feature values for backness and rounding as the stem vowel. That is, if the stem vowel is plus back, the, the suffix vowel is also plus back. And if the stem vowel is plus round, stem vowel, the suffix vowel is also plus round. The same thing happens when the stem vowel has a negative value for the feature back or round. The following chart is a reminder of the features that are necessary to keep in mind in order to understand and solve this problem on vowel harmony in Turkish. So you might want to pause the video and take a look uh, at the chart and try to remember all these features. Now, keep in mind the features for high vowels. It is advisable for those of you who don't memorize these features to go back to these charts as we look at the data below. Let's take the data below uh, in, uh, with some detail. Uh, look at number one. Number one and number two, that's dish and ev. These two words can contain front spread vowels, that is minus back, minus round. The suffix meaning my would be attached to these two words and having the same features for backness and rounding. That is e, im, which is also minus back, minus round. Now look at numbers three and four. Gönül and göz. The vowels here are minus back plus round. We expect the prefix to take the same features again to be minus back, minus round. That's exactly what we find. Gönülüm and gözüm. Now we move on to number five, bash. The vowel A in bash is plus back, minus round. We expect again that the, the suffix is going to be to have the same features for backness and rounding. And that's the vowel A, bashim. Number six and seven are back rounded vowels, gul and kol. And of course, the suffix agrees in backness and rounding with the stem vowel, and we have um, gulum, and kolum. This process is known by the name of vowel harmony. And, and here, in the last slide of this video is the last example we look at and what's known by the name of umlaut or vowel fronting in german look at the examples so in german the stem back vowel assimilates the frontness of the suffix vowel and both vowels become front in other words we have seen in turkish how the Suffix assimilates the features of the stem vowel. In German, we look at the opposite direction. In other words, how the stem changes to look like the suffix. Look at the first word, ja, which means year. And every year in German is jährlich, every year. Now the vowel a has moved from back to front because of the influence of the suffix vowel, which is also front. The next word is stunde, hour. The vowel u is plus back plus round. When we add the suffix, which contains the front vowel, the stem vowel becomes also front, stündlich. The next example is gut, 
And if we add the suffix again, this becomes gütig. And so the same thing happens with the word not, that's plus back, plus round, and nötig, which becomes plus round, minus back, because the suffix vowel is minus back. Look at the next example, got and Göttin. So this process is known by umlaut. Now it would be a good idea to play back the video and go over these processes carefully and, and try to uh, keep in mind all these processes so that you will be able to solve problems on, on assimilation, similar problems on assimilation later on.